if you can't handle yucky stuff, medical procedures, anything to do with medical stuff, I would suggest you click off the video now because this is going to get pretty gruesome. So it's going to get some gruesome and gross medical stuff. Hey y'all. So yeah, the infection is back. This is In My Shoes. Will's optional. The world from a different perspective. Supporting and educating the world. Busting the stigmas of disability and invisible illnesses. I have videos that are actually backlogged at the moment because I've been so unwell. So I apologise that my PJs can't be stuffed, too sick to care. Anyway, today it happened again. The abscess and sinus and infection that I have had for t since two weeks of my laparoscopy for my endometriosis where they had to remove um, scarring as well as endocysts which had then also caused scarring to them essentially between my uterus and my bowel and they'd fused together so that had to be cut away and removed as well as my uterus had been punctured by my two marinas I have two because my endo is so bad I have to have a lot of hormones to manage that I also take the pill to help combat that as well so yeah the infection is back if you're on my Twitter or my Instagram you'd see that I'll add the links in the bottom if you want to join them my Instagram is where I actually post most things of updates with health because it's quick and I can upload a photo with a quick description and also my close friends on my Facebook know what's going on too so this is the fourth time I've had an infection through the port. The port was quite massive on my belly button. I only had two ports because the majority of it, because it was that fusion between the bowel and the uterus, he had to go through a huge port. And pretty much, if you see, it's like this big, the cut. Um, had to end up being, and that's after it healed, so it was actually quite a lot bigger. And then the one above my pubic bone as well. So I've had four infections in that area. The first two were okay, and at that point I was going to doctors and I was just managing it. Third time I went back to Dr. who was my gynecologist as well as the surgeon who did the operation. He put me onto three different types of antibiotics. He did no scans or anything, even though I had had an ultrasound by a GP who fit me in when I first had the explosion of pus. Anyway, this is the fourth time I've had this infection. The third time, which was a couple weeks back, it was actually this month, according to the results that the doctor checked today. It was only this month that that third infection was back. I saw a doctor in an emergency appointment in the medical center because they fit me in because it had exploded and there was thick green pus everywhere. <laughs> and I'd been to the emergency department, paid the 200 and something dollars to see a doctor. They pretty much dusted me off as, oh, it's just an infection. It shouldn't be from your surgery because you've had that like eight weeks ago so it can't be that even though I tried to explain to them yes it could this is the third time please do tests or something they didn't do any tests besides some basic blood tests to show that it was an infection he gave me basic antibiotics even though I showed him the picture and said, you know, I have autoimmune diseases. I can't manage this. You need to do something more serious. Uh, he brushed me off essentially, even after paying 200 and something dollars, because it was an emergency. I'd just come back from my sister's, my first sister, not my real sister. I'd come back from hers and I was nearly passing out just from how much pain and how sick I felt while I was driving. And I said, I'm not safe to drive. I need to go to the emergency. So I went to the <laughs> told him what was going on. And yeah, and I was just brushed off. So then it got worse. I got sicker and sicker. So mum had had enough. And she took me to <laughs> medical as much as I hate them. Because my old GP is there. And she's an absolute bitch. 
and won't give me my records. But anyway, Mum likes them, so he sent me there. They fit me in, and then they had an emergency ultrasound form that got faxed off the closest ultrasound people, and they fit me in within like 15 minutes, just because of how serious the doctor assumed it was, which I'm so thankful for her, because she took it seriously, which it was. And then, during the ultrasound, about a few minutes into the ultrasound, the lady was really chatty, and then a few minutes in, all of a sudden, she stopped chatting, and she had this, like, stern face, that I knew was the, oh shit, there's something here, face, and the way that she just went quiet, and and I know it was the, I'm concentrating, there's something serious here. And I'm like, what's wrong? And she's like, oh, you need to go back and see your doctor. Which was another clue. Yeah, there's something more serious going on. So I went back to the doctor that ordered the scan. Turned out it was an abscess. So yeah, that's a bit more serious than an infection. <laughs> so then I, doctor fitted me in the next day to get an emergency appointment to see him. He did, excuse my language, but f*** all. He did not take it seriously at all. He's like, oh, I'm just going to create a bigger hole and it's going to drain out. Here's three antibiotics to take for three days, that's it. And you should be better. And it should be all gone. I've had medical training because I did nursing for two years. You don't do that with an abscess. Yes, you put your put them on antibiotics, but you've got to flush out the abscess because there's still pus in there. Creating a hole is not going to drain it. You've got to you got to flush it out, and especially if it's from an operation that was very deep into like my uterus, my stomach, my bowel, and the infection could be that deep. Maybe you should do more. He didn't even like get a. When I saw him in three days, get an updated ultrasound to see if it had shrunk. He didn't even bother doing that. I was still really, really sick at this point. Even though the infection from the abscess looked mostly gone. Like, there wasn't a lot of discharge, but there was still discharge. Like, green, thick discharge. But he's like, oh, well, it's mostly gone, so it should be, you should be better. And then just sent me home. And these appointments aren't cheap. He's like a hundred and something dollars out of pocket to see. So I was pissed. And the fact that he works at the who brushed me off when I went to the emergency a day or two before, that shitted me off even more. Because there's two hundred dollars for seeing that doctor, and then hundred and something to see him, and then another hundred and something to see him, and nothing was done besides, oh, here's some basic antibiotics. Like, he put me on three different strong ones, and he had a culture results done from the doctor that did the ultrasound she sent off some. So he hadn't done anything. These are all other doctors who had done something, and he essentially did nothing in response. So I had enough. Straight after that appointment, I made an appointment with my closest doctor in Rosewood. Not technically my GP, but kind of like my backup slash second GP. Um, so they know a bit of my history, but not all of it. But the main thing is they know I have dysautonomia, which is the POTS classification of dysautonomia. So they know that I have a serious condition. They know I've got more, but don't know exactly because they haven't got results from my old GP. So I went straight there and, he's, and the doctor that I saw was just like, he hasn't even done an ultrasound to see if it's shrunk. Why not? So he sent me straight for an ultrasound. Guess what? There was more going on. They found even more. It turns out they hadn't, the abscess had actually hidden what's called a sinus, a sinus tract. Essentially, the infection was much deeper, like I thought it was. And it had actually come up from like low in my stomach and had come up and created like this little tract in my flesh, like a little tiny snake so the infection could get out. So it wasn't even the abscess that was the main issue. It was that infection lower down. And it's kind of a bit hard to keep up because so much has been, so much has happened in all this short period due to that. He saw the sinus, he's like, there's so much more serious going on. You need to see a surgeon who is actually experienced in this because your gynecologist is not taking this seriously as well as he probably doesn't even know 
how to handle infections, which pissed me off that he's acting like he does when he doesn't. So he made an emergency appointment, well tried to make an emergency appointment with a guy called Dr. F who is in Ipswich near St. Andrews and a private surgeon. He was, you know, recommended really, recommended as really good. But I couldn't see him until Monday and this was Thursday, Friday. So, yeah, no, it was Thursday and he couldn't see me till Monday, uh, Monday or Tuesday. And I just got worse and worse and worse. So I had enough. Saturday, I just said to mum, I need to go to hospital. I cannot fucking handle this anymore. I'm sorry if I get a bit emotional. But I was standing up and I was passing out, which is not normal. And when you have something like dysautonomia, that's an even more warning sign that something more serious is going on. Sorry. I get really emotional because of how frustrated I am at the system, so I apologise. Let me get myself together, sorry. <clears throat> it's a bit hard when you're dealing with medical stuff, you get exhausted emotionally. But yeah, I don't know if I made an appointment with because they don't actually have an ED emergency department. They You can only make appointments with like a doctor after hours. And because I'm disability pension, I can see them for like $50 out of pocket, which is good for like an emergency thing. And I don't really trust anyone else besides because they have my history, as well as knowing about my autoimmune disease and my neurological conditions and my nerve damage and stuff. Um, so they know all about that. And surprisingly, the doctor I saw was the one who knows all about that and has seen me before with like my legs paralysis and the nerve damage and collapsing and stuff. So he knew like all about me and he knew that I knew my body. And he took me 110% for my word. Like, I was saying, I am so sick, I cannot handle this. There is more going on. Plus, this is the third time this infection has come around. You need to investigate. And he took me 110% at my word, believed I knew my body, which, f you know, I wish doctors would do. Especially with chronic illnesses, you know when something's not right. Because you know what is normal sick for you, because you're always sick, that's just a part of it. But when you get sick sick, and it's not your normal sick, you know something's wrong, and you want it found out as soon as possible, because the longer they leave it, the worse it's going to be. And it's 110% guaranteed it's going to be 10 times worse if they leave it. Which was the case. So it turned out they'd all been wrong. All these tests, all these results, were hiding the serious issue. He um, got on the phone to a surgeon who is kind of like the replacement for Dr. Because I found out he actually works at Because his uh, receptionist told my mum, if I got worse on the weekend, go to Because Dr. could then see me at Monday if I was admitted. So this doctor called up Dr. Uh, his surgeon that he works instead of Dr. on the weekends. And said to him, you know, there's more going on. This needs to be investigated. So this surgeon then said, what about CT? Has the CT been done? He's like, and no, CT hasn't been done. Only ultrasounds. He's like, yeah, no, a CT needs to be done, especially since you've had an operation. So then the doctor hung up and said to me, you're right, there's more going on. We need to investigate what's going on. So I'd like you to come back tomorrow and do a CT. I was pretty emotional at this point because I wanted to be admitted because you know standing up and passing out because you're so sick is not normal and I couldn't manage at home like I don't exactly have the best support here as in carer wise like no one really helped mum kind of helps me but not to the degree that I need to survive on a daily basis I walked out and I ended up in tears with mum and I no I was with my dad sorry which was even worse I got on the phone to my mum and I was in tears. I'm like, I need to be admitted. I can't come back here tomorrow. It's so exhausting. Because I live 40 to 50 minutes away from this hospital. So that's 50 minutes home, 50 minutes back tomorrow, in like, in a few hours. Because it was at midnight, 1am at this point, And they wanted me back at 11. So by the time I got home, I would have had to pass out, which I was not do doing. 
I was sleeping like 18 hours a day, but to actually get to sleep was so freaking hard just because of the pain and how sick I felt. Like I was feeling like I was going to vomit 24-7. Like, you know that horrible feeling where you feel so close to vomiting, but you just can't? That was what I felt like all the time. Plus, I kept having dizzy spells, blackouts, the collapsing and passing out. I was not managing, especially on 18 hours a day, sleep. Like, I was not getting enough fluids, which is a big thing with POTS, which is why my POTS was getting worse. So, yeah, he sent me home. I was too exhausted to fight, so I just went home and came back for a CT scan. Turned out it was pretty serious. So, the surgeon doctor had f***ed up big time. They found in the CT scan massive a collection of blood. I can't remember the name of it. But essentially, because it had been there too long, they could not remove it. Because it is fused with my muscles and my skin. It's all fused inside now. Even though there's a massive collection of it and it's not normal. Well, they say it's causing the infections, but I think there's more going on. As well as the pain. Before I say that, I'll go on, continue on. So then... They just said, you know, there's nothing we can do. You need to go home and you just need to get good pain management and the infection should now be gone because you've been on antibiotics. And I thought the infection was gone because it looked gone. And it was gone to a degree. Like, it was gone on the surface. I think inside it was still there because the abscess and the sinus had still not been flushed. It was not packed to stop fluid collection that then becomes infected, which is another thing I learned in nursing that you do. So he sent me home. It wasn't his fault because I think there was just too many doctors putting their heads in saying the wrong thing. And he was trying to do the right thing because I'd been on antibiotics, but according to all the other doctors, and the other doctors said that the infection was gone. So he believed the infection was gone and that the blood was the cause for why I was so sick. The last... I'll continue go on to Dr. So I didn't really like hearing that there was nothing that could be done. So I decided to keep my appointment with Dr. for Monday or Tuesday, whichever one. So I saw him. He gave me a lot better information, that's for sure. I think just because I wasn't talking to the surgeon directly, I was talking through another doctor that didn't kind of give me enough information. So I talked to Dr. He said there was nothing he could do because yes, it had been left so long that it had fused with like all my muscles and it's not like they could cut all my skin and muscles out to get rid of the blood because there was no way to drain it because it wasn't like in like a hollow hole or anything like that so it's not that simple he was really nice except that he brought up my weight which <laughs> I laughed and he was apologetic after I explained you know I've been a size 10 since as long as I can remember, this is just a side effect of one of my medications. I've never put on weight from medication, so I went from a size 10 to a size 16. <laughs> um, but yeah, he apologized once I explained, which was, you know, it's fair enough. Because he said, you know, your weight might have been why you, you had this issue, and it's like, no, it's not. <laughs> Looking at it now, I actually believe my POTS was the cause of this, because the way POTS works is it makes your blood thicker, so it kind of slows it down, I believe. So what happened, I think, during Dr. surgery, because my blood is so thick, it didn't kind of rush out. So whatever had been nicked that caused the internal bleeding during the surgery, which is how you get the blood collection thingy. Sorry, I can't remember the name, but you know what I'm talking about. I think, in reality, he didn't realise that it was a serious bleed because it was probably sedate bleeding it wasn't fast like if normal and also it could have just been missed because it was not like rushing blood he could have just thought oh this is just normal blood for the area I'm in so then when he stitched me up the bleed continued so he just sewed me up and the bleed continued but what pisses me off is that I said what actually happened is I actually woke up screaming from the surgery like, that is not normal for me at all. I've had four laparoscopies every time I wake up in relief. Like, the pain is down. I'm not screaming my lungs out in agony. But what pissed me off was Dr. just said to me and Mum, oh, you shouldn't be in that much pain, and then just brushed it off. He didn't investigate why I was in that much pain. 
and it would have been the bleeding. Like, if you're bleeding internally, that's going to f***ing hurt. Especially if it's continuing to the point where the pressure keeps building, and then you've got just this massive amount of blood. Which explains why my belly is also quite distorted. Like, it looks like I'm pregnant continuously now, just because there's all that blood there. Yeah, but it just pissed me off. He didn't take it seriously, and he could have found the issue back then, and because it wasn't fused with anything, it could have been removed. And we could have avoided all these issues. I think there's more to the infection than just the blood, though. But essentially, from what I've been told, it could have solved all the issues. The other doctors that I saw when I started to get sick should have taken me seriously, too. Shouldn't have taken a random doctor to take me seriously. Well, a random doctor and then a doctor in a hospital who knows that I don't bullshit and that I know my body. And that I've got serious conditions that mean shit needs to be investigated. Because with me, it's going to be ten times worse if it doesn't get found out until too late, like now. But yes, back to the beginning of everything today. My belly exploded again. I will add a nice little picture here. The picture can't really show you like the darkness of it and how thick it was. It was back to what it was before and it exploded and if you look at the little picture here which was taken a few days before you'll see the little red bit that's kind of pushing out. I just thought that was blood. I didn't think that it was an infection again. But since essentially a few, I think it was about a week after the infection had all cleared up, I started getting really, really sick again. The collapses started getting worse and my pots started getting worse. Not to the point that it was and currently is again, but it started getting worse again. I think that was about two weeks ago. I also started getting really, really severe diarrhea six times a day which would add to dehydration and then aggravation of the dysautonomia and the POTS. So yeah, that added to all that, which was fun. And then I just progressively and progressively got worse again, and now I'm back to what I was after that, inf that infection has exploded out of my belly again. So I believe that the abscess is back, probably reinfected and re-swollen with pus, and the sinus is probably full of pus again because it is still leaking pus yeah and when I squeezed it a ton came out and I you shouldn't I'm going to say you should never ever ever squeeze an abscess if you uh, do not have medical training and understand how to do it safely and in a hygienic manner if you have something like this please 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 go to your emergency department or see your GP immediately because it needs to be done by a professional I'm not saying I'm a professional, but I have been taught how to do these kinds of things for myself because I have to be, because it's just a part of having chronic illness and because I've had an infection this many times, like even before this I used to get, I was prone to infections due to a compromised immune system from autoimmune diseases. So I'm kind of used to dealing with infections because I have to be. You can't go to a doctor every time it happens if it happens every week. Uh, which it used to do for a couple months at a time. Uh, but anyway, that's happened. I'm back to barely being able to stand without feeling like I'm going to pass out or passing out. I have to be very careful when I stand up again because I get the head spins. Even in the car today, coming back from the doctor that saw me today in emergency appointment, um, I nearly passed out sitting down in the car just because I had a massive head spin and my ears started ringing which is the normal like if you've ever passed out you get the black dots in your eyes and your ears start ringing I had that without the blackness because I shut my eyes really quick because I know it helps anyway I saw the doctor I called up the local doctor Rosewood they had no appointments and I told the receptionist you know this is emergency this happened again I need to get it sorted because I've got autoimmune disease needs to be done. I need to see someone. So she fit me into Laidley. Unfortunately, we were, we didn't get there in like 15 minutes because there were two bloody roadworks up the mountain at the moment. But we got there about 4.30 instead of, you know, quarter past four. Luckily before all the storms hit because it's like pouring with rain and there's really bad storms at the moment. She was appalled and said, you know, this is the fourth 
time, why is the surgeon not taking this seriously? And she told me to go back to Dr. And I flat out refused. And I said, I've done it. He wants nothing to do with this. He has not taken it seriously. has no idea what he's talking about. Didn't even bother to get scans or anything. I will not go back to him because I want to be taken seriously. And this needs to be dealt with. And she's like, okay, I understand. And I explained to her how sick I was. And that, you know, just standing, I want to, I feel like collapsing or have collapsed. And she's like, okay, if you get any worse tonight, you need to go to hospital. You have to go to hospital. I'm like, okay, I'll go to because they've dealt with this before. She's like, okay, that's a good idea. I'll give you the results of your last ultrasound with us before you saw them before the CT. And she's given me that. She's also put me on very basic antibiotics and she's also uh, requested an emergency ultrasound and given me the form to get that done but everything was closed because it was about five o'clock at that time once I got back to the car from the chemist with antibiotics so there's no possible way to get in I'm hoping that there's an online booking system for tomorrow or there's a very likely possibility I will be in either now, like in the next few hours or tomorrow evening, uh, tomorrow morning, I'm really, really hoping that I can push it until after I see my psychiatrist because I really f need to see her right now due to stuff at home with my PTSD and BPD and the abuse at home has just gotten unbelievable. So I need to talk to her about that and I will push myself to not be in hospital even if it makes me worse just so I can see her because my mental health right now is more important than my physical health because I've been through this before I can push through it I know that and if I collapse and I have to go to hospital I will but I need to see her and I'm gonna push like hell to do that before before I have to get admitted or if they will freaking admit me which I doubt it it's like they they don't want to admit me because then they're liable for me even though just IV fluids at this point would help my pots massively. Because again, I'm sleeping ridiculous hours, which is what happened last time. But she said, you know, this is not normal. There's There's got to be more going on than just the collection of blood. Because you shouldn't keep getting this infection back. And even if the doctors had flushed it or anything like that, she believes I still would have got it back because there's more going on, which I believe also. So, let's just hope the ultrasound can do something to give her results or if I have to get to hospital, go to hospital, have all the results that they've done from the CT and everything and I can sign paperwork to make sure that they get all the ultrasound results and also they've got ultrasound stuff that they can do there. If, if I do have to get admitted, which is very likely possible anyway. So, I just thought I'd give everyone an update as well as, I know this has turned into a bit of a vent vlog, but I just needed to get it out. Again, there's lots of videos that have been before this. I've tried to explain it all in, quite, uh, in a summary as much as I can. If I've left anything out, just let me know in the comments and I'll happily answer any questions anyone has. Unless, of course, it's like on my conditions. Video for another time if I decide to go into it. I may not because, you know, I don't really want to. I only want to go into stuff that really matters. And I want to bring awareness for my other stuff isn't really that important. And it doesn't really affect this video or what I'm going through right now. Besides the conditions I've mentioned. But anyway, I'm not going to be rude and go like, yeah, it's none of your business. If you're curious, I may answer, I may not. Just respect that. Yeah, I may not answer and don't take it personally. It also may be that I'm in hospital and I can't really answer or I'm just too sick and pass out in bed for like the whole day, which has been happening. The diarrhea is still going on, unfortunately. And they did a test on that, which is like a little poo thing, which is lovely to do. Note the sarcasm. And there are no infections or anything so it is very highly likely it was the warnings of this infection that we're going on because abscesses do create diarrhea quite severely because your body's trying to get the infection out as well as i have rbs and it could be irritating that i don't know but anyway that's still going on which is lovely and helping me get more dehydrated which is making me get more tired more sick more passing out 
all that fun stuff. So yes, thought I'd give everyone an update. Thank you all for watching my vent vlog. <laughs> I will catch you all later. Keep smiling, happy chaps. This has been In My Shoes, Will's Optional. Night! <laughs>